Today, I'll take you through some essential top tips to help you sound more British when you speak. So if you want to learn a British accent, then this is the video for you. Some people think that the British RP accent is quite hard to pull off, but actually, if you follow a couple of simple rules, then it becomes a lot easier. If you're new here, my name's Izzy. I'm a final year medical student at Cambridge University. This video has been very highly requested in my comments and DMs. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some key points where you can really make your accent sound a lot more British. I'll go over five main points today, which will be word choice, consonants, vowels, intonation, and finally, how to practice to perfect your British accent, whether this is for acting or if you just want to learn how to speak with more of an RP accent, then hopefully this video can help you out. I'll particularly focus on the vowels and the consonants as these are the areas where you can really make the most immediate impact and immediate difference to the way that your accent sounds. Today we'll only be going through tips to speak with a modern or a modified RP accent, which is just my accent, this is how I speak. RP stands for Received Pronunciation and is sort of traditionally known as the standard accent for people in the south of England. This standard southern British English is sort of a bit like the accent that BBC broadcasters speak with, so sometimes it's also known as BBC English or Queen's English. It is predominantly spoken in the south of England, but obviously it's not confined to this geographical area and there are so many different varieties of British English even within the south. So if you're interested in learning an accent that sounds a bit like mine, then keep watching this video. So the first thing that you want to pay attention to when you're trying to sound more British is actually word choice and vocabulary. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but it's really important to make sure the words you're choosing are the British version rather than, let's say, the American version. So just some examples here would be, for example, trash in American English is known as rubbish in the UK. Some other examples include pants versus trousers, which is what we would say in Britain. There are also certain words or expressions that just sound quintessentially British, such as the adjective knackered to describe when you're really tired, I'm absolutely knackered, or phrases like that's a good shout. When speaking to an American friend of mine, I sometimes use this phrase and he's a bit baffled, like, oh, what does that mean? What does good shout mean? It just means that's a good idea, <laughs> essentially. So by choosing your words and phrases carefully, you can sound more British in this way. The second thing to really pay attention to is your consonants. So consonants are an area where British English, particularly RP, really distinguishes itself from other forms of English accents. There are two key points that I want to address here. Firstly is the T sounds. Make sure that you enunciate all of your T's. This T sound should be clearly enunciated at the beginning, in the middle, and also between words. So examples of this would be the word to or teacher. You want to really like make sure that that T sound is there, but it's not a very hard T that you spit out. It's like a, a sort of light T. So it's not like teacher, it's just teacher. And you can clearly hear that T sound. A huge difference between American and British sounding English is the T in the middle of words, such as words like water. So the word water in RP, the T in the middle is clearly a T. Apologies in advance for my American accent. I'm can't really do an American accent, but I'll try to just give you an example. In American English, they might say it more like a D, like water. Other examples of this include the word better versus better, or city versus city. So make sure that those are really coming out clearly. Next is T's between words. So for example, the phrase let it be, the T isn't a D sound. Again, it's this making sure that it's a, clearly a T sound and not a D sound. So I feel like sometimes in American English, people say let it be, almost like a D, but this is let it be. Or another example, it is what it is. So I'm just going to put a phrase on screen now and I'd like you to read it out in a British accent, including all the T's. So that would be pronounced, it is what it is. One thing you may be wondering about is something known as the glottal stop. So in some variations of British English, the glottal stop is used in place of a T. So for example, the word water with a glottal T would sound like water. So it's where the T isn't just fully removed. It's like, for example, water and you're about to put the T in, but then you kind of, there's a tension in your throat that just cuts off the sound. I would say that this isn't really part of RP English, so if that's the accent you're aiming for, then 
glottal stops are not something that you need to worry about, but I thought I would just address them as they are a very widespread part of other forms of British English. A very commonly cited example of this is, I want a bottle of water, which with glottal stop teas instead of normal teas would sound like... A bottle of water? A bottle of water. <laughs> I can't do it. The second point in consonants is the R sound. So often the R sound is actually dropped in British English. While the T's are always pronounced, the R's are sometimes dropped. This is known as a non-rhotic. Essentially in RP, you only pronounce the R sound when there is a vowel sound after the R. In examples such as the word British, you do pronounce the R sound because there's an I sound right after it, a vowel sound. But in other examples, such as the word teacher, it has an R on the end of it, but there's no vowel sound after the R. So we don't actually enunciate the R sound itself. So for example, in American English, sometimes you'll hear something more like teacher. What? Obviously my American accent's terrible, so please forgive me for that. So some examples of where this R is dropped off and replaced with a diphthong vowel, essentially a kind of longer version of the vowel, are words like doctor, teacher, water, better, learn, work, party, cart, bird. So dropping off the R sounds where there's no vowel sound after the R, is really important to developing that RP sounding accent. Next, coming to vowel sounds. Vowel sounds are so important to nailing a British accent or any accent for that matter. So I'll be going over a couple of sounds that are quintessentially British that you can incorporate into your own speaking. There are a set number of key vowels, including diphthongs that are important to learn. And there's a table of them. I'll include one over here that you can just use for reference. There are so many more thorough accent learning resources online if you're interested in in that. So the first vowel sound that is super important to British English is the schwa sound. This is the most common vowel in British RP English. So it's super important to nail this as it's absolutely everywhere. And examples that include it include similar words that we've used before actually, things like teacher, that uh at the end, water, doctor, luck, that uh in luck. Even the word the itself <laughs> has that uh sound. And to make this vowel sound, you essentially want to have a fairly relaxed mouth with your tongue just resting in your mouth. And you just want to go, ah. Uh. The next vowel is the short O sound. This sound is very British and is included in words such as hot, stop, slot, got. <laughs> All of these sorts of words with this O oh sound. In, for example, American English, the word stop might be more pronounced as stop rather than stop. So this is a very round shape with the mouth with the lips slightly pushing out and the tongue just slightly relaxed and flattened in the mouth. The next vowel is the long A sound. This is like an R sound, which is present in words such as grass, bath, father, rather, fast, last, to make the sound, open your mouth quite wide, like almost like you're going to the dentist. Flatten your tongue and slide it back a little bit and make this ah sound, ah, that kind of sound. And just practice last, past, bath, grass. And this is in contrast to an almost hard A, where in some areas of Britain, in British English, instead of having this long A sound, which is present in RP English, there's an almost like an ah sound instead. So instead of bath, it will be bath. The next vowel is a big round O sound. So this is present in words such as hello, no, slow, low, go, halo, zero. And this is actually a diphthong where there's actually almost two sounds within the vowel and the vowel changes over time. That's what a diphthong is essentially. It's sometimes known as a gliding vowel. So the sound goes from o, o. It's like your mouth closes down as you go through the vowel, o. To make the sound, your tongue starts off nice and relaxed with your mouth slightly open in a round shape. And then as you progress through the vowel, you kind of imagine it kind of closing down. Oh, oh, that kind of thing. And I think this one's quite important to nail because it's in the word hello. And I feel like sometimes people try to mimic the British English accent, the RP accent with the word hello. And the really 
key thing that distinguishes whether they've nailed it or not is this O sound at the end. So some people almost overemphasize it and they go, hello, but that's almost closing it down too fast. It needs to be a very gradual O, quite relaxed O. And it's also not a single sound. It's not O. Oh. Some people say hello or hello, hello. It's not that, it's hello. Finally, the fourth thing to pay attention to is the rhythm and intonation. This is so important, but it's really hard to teach in a few quick tips. It's something that you need to really absorb over time. And this includes all the stresses and emphases on the word and essentially the musicality of the language. And this really contributes to making you sound more British and also making you sound more understandable as well. So how can you practice all of this? I would recommend listening to plenty of podcasts or radio shows and also watching TV shows, movies or YouTube videos with people speaking in this accent. And what you can do is a technique called mirroring, which is essentially where you play or listen to them say a phrase and then you pause whatever it is and then you say it back. You repeat this process a few times to try to imitate their accent as closely as possible. And one thing that can help and lots of students that I've had have found helpful is if you focus specifically on a few vowels or a few consonants at a time. So for example, if you start with a sentence and you specifically focus on making sure you nail all the T's or making sure that you nail all the O sounds, and then you can kind of build up from there so it doesn't feel too overwhelming or paralyzing because it's a lot to try to change an accent and it does take a lot of work. This technique called mirroring is actually something I used extensively when I was trying to learn Mandarin. I'll link a video over here somewhere about my experience of learning Mandarin and how I did that. But otherwise, I hope this video has been helpful or interesting in some way, and I really hope it helps you to get closer to your goal of maybe sounding more British. If you enjoyed this video, you might like this one over here where I talk a bit more about accents and language learning. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.